Hello my lovely floss tube friends. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Where have I been? <laughs> what have I been doing? <sighs> it's the summer. summer you know what I'm like in the summer I have so many things that I'm doing I tend to sort of just drop off a little bit with the whole floss tube but I'm here so today's day is the 10th of August the last time you actually had an update a monthly update from me was back in May but I did do a stitch with me video which just had some background music um, while I did manage to do some stitching between the last update and now so Massive um, thank you to all my lovely new subscribers that have been subscribing to me. I don't know where you all came from, but it's so lovely to have you. And obviously my returning, returning subscribers and, and, and fellow friend floss tube um, community, welcome back. What to tell you? I have to be honest, this is going to be a bit of a mixed video because, well, I haven't done amazing amounts of stitching. Although backtrack <laughs> as usual I didn't think I'd done amazing amounts of stitching but then when I've actually looked at what I have done I was like well actually there's enough there to actually make a video and talk to my friends so here we are but as well as stitching obviously you know I'm very much into my flowers and my gardening in the summer so a lot of you have you know sort of said that you like to see my garden so at the end of this video, there will be a little bit about the gardening for those that are interested. There's a few bits and pieces along the way. Um, so yeah, let's just dive on in and, and get started, shall so we? as far as where have I been, it's probably easier to me to just waffle to you whilst I'm showing you stuff because that's the easiest way. That's what you're here to see. You're here to see the stitching, not to listen to my life story. <laughs> so anything of interest, I'll throw in along the way. So, let's start with the whip update. And like I said, I didn't think there was much. I really didn't think that there was much to show you. But actually, when I've looked back and looked at what I've been doing, there's actually more than I realised. So, where I can, I will show you the footage of the last time you saw it, for those that are returning subscribers and returning friends of Blostube. Hold that thought, because I've just realised I've left some of the stuff over there. Okay, I should be done now. I should be all here, <laughs> uh, all laid out. So stitching. So the first one up is um, my mini red queen, red dragon. And about now I should be showing you where you last saw it. This one I am stitching on a 28 count magic guide. Um, two over one tenth stitch and I, about now you should be seeing a picture of what it will look like when it's done and here is where we've got to so it's coming along nicely um, I've worked on what have I worked on I've worked on some more down here um, and across here so we've got some branches reference his picture of what it should look like she says here's a picture of what it should look like so you can sort of see where I am I'm, I'm up in that top up in this top corner here is where we're at so yeah not bad not bad like I say any progress for me at this time of year is, is a bonus. <laughs> because, oh, because it's the summer. And because it's so hot in the sunny south. So for those that don't know, I live in the UK, very close to London. I say very close to London. I'm on the outskirts of London. Um, but I'm in the very, the very bottom corner. Which, to be honest, for the UK gets the best of the weather. You know, when people sort of say, it always rains in England. Um, it does always rain in England, but 
if there's any place that's going to get more sunshine and less rain than anywhere else, it's usually about here, where I live. So I'm quite lucky in the respect that it's not always wet and cold and windy. Um, but because of that, it's always, you know, I like to be outside because it is warm. I like to take advantage of it all. So, and I'm not an outdoor stitcher. I can't, you know, I can't stitch whilst I'm outside. Probably could if I was more of a small, small project stitcher. I think if I had more small projects and it wasn't overly sunny where you're sort of sitting out there baking um, and you sort of, you know, you just wanted to sit out there. But then again, I only really sit out in the garden and do nothing and just sort of sit and enjoy the moment in the evenings, which in the evening it's too dark to do any stitching. You know, normally it's sort of, sort of an alfresco dinner with family, sit and have a chat. Um, and then it's normally too dark. So you wouldn't be able to sit out there and stitch. There you go. See, we've already reverted to the garden. We only got to whip one. <laughs> okay, so whip number two. Um, that I've done a token gesture amount of stitching on is my um, Heaven and Earth design. Do you know what? I didn't tell you. Mini Red Queen Red Dragon is a Heaven and Earth design. And I can't remember the life of me who the designer is, so I'll put that down here in the bottom. This one is my alternative reality. About now you should be seeing a picture of what it should look like. And this one, again, is a Heaven and Earth design. This one is by Josephine Wall. And about now, you should see where I... Well, I think I've already done the last bit. See what I mean? It's all over the place today, people. So this is where we have got to. I haven't got a reference picture for you. Um, I've basically been working this section up here. We're on the next page. I decided that I would do this page, come down, meet to there, and then maybe go down and do this page and try and stay. Although I'm, I'm undecided whether I want to go across the top and come this way. I'm still not sure orientation-wise which way I'm going to go with it, but I'll get this next page done and then I'll make my decision. So again, love these pieces. These are rather confetti heavy. This one is stitched on a 25 count. Yes, 25 count magic guide, although you can see the magic guide starting to scrub off because it's getting that old now. Um, and this one is one over one in full cross. Still love it. It's just one of the ones where you need a lot more time to actually sit and stitch on it. And, you know, you can sit there for a good hour or so and not really feel like you've made much headway because you're forever changing your threads. But it's not to say that I don't love it still. Next up um, is my newish project. So this one is slightly different. So it's not just cross stitch. This is <clears throat> my Autumn Prony Promise, um, which is a drawn thread stroke hard hanger piece um, by Judy Dixon. I love this. It's so different. It's something so, so refreshing. When you've just sat there doing just cross stitch and then I pick this one up, it's like, oh, something different. But it goes really fast. So whereas sort of sometimes when I'm working on my big full coverage pieces, you can spend hours stitching and at the end of it, it's like, well, yeah, I did spend a lot of time doing it, but I didn't really make amazing amounts of headway. With this, you don't really need to spend too much time doing it and you seem to get so much further on. So about now you should be seeing a picture of what it should look like and where you've last seen it, somewhere along here. And I'll put all the details, everything to do with this, the stitching that I'm currently working on, I will put in the description box below. Um, for any of those that are interested to go see them um, or find out where they are. This is where we have got to on this piece. And I love it. So let me jump off my stool. Um, <clears throat> so that was the band that I'd done before. I did the cut work. The band underneath, so this band... Oh, let's push that down there. So this band here is one band 
which I did. I've done the cutouts. There's still some wrapping that needs to happen here. I completed this and done the cut work, but I haven't actually again done the wrapping. I'm gonna save all that till last. Then we have another band here. Oh, there we go. There's your next band, which is the, the up and downs. And then this is the band that I've just been working on here. So obviously a repeat of the uh, cloister type blocks these are the satin stitches. There is cut work in these squares that needs to happen and then wrapping or weaving one out of the two. Again, I'll save that till last. This one here, again, is another sort of um, satin stitch with some rice stitches on the corners. Um, I can't remember what stitch that is, but that's another. And then this, this is gonna be replicated into this square as well. So that is where I have got to, and I love this piece. And the fact that it's really quite therapeutic to do something just slightly different, to, <coughs> i get it back up, slightly different um, to just doing the cross stitch. I never thought I would ever be able to sort of take on something like this, if I'm honest. Um, but in actual fact, the instructions that come with these Judy Dixons um, are so, so easy to follow. Um, it, it comes with a main pattern to sort of show your orientation wise where you are, where, where you need to be, where you need to start. But then wherever there's sort of in each of the bands, it then has a, another bit of paper that will tell you, okay, this stitch this is how you do this stitch. Very, very easy to follow. So anyone that wants, would like to try something a little different, um, maybe some drawn thread or you know this type of this type of stitching, I would definitely advise you to try some of the the Judy Dixon designs. Um, I got mine from I think it was Tails in Stitches or something along that lines. Again, I'll put the link down here. It was on an Etsy website. Um, it was great you know it all got sent to me um and like i say the the instructions for this are just super easy i mean if i can do it anyone can do it because I, i'm not really that good at a lot of things when it comes to my stitching because i've not been doing it for as long as most people um so yeah super super instructions really easy to follow absolutely love it and because it is something slightly different once you do get into the swing of it like i say you know, you can stitch for half an hour, an hour on this. It's like, wow, I've done a whole like outer block. It's, it, it can stitch up really quick, really quick. Okay, so the last whip that I've actually worked on since we last spoke is my lovely evening in the park. Here she is. Um, here she is. I don't know why I call it a she. She's not a she. It's an if, but for me, it's like a she. I don't know why. And I've sort of, rather than follow the pattern and, you know, do each quarter in the square where you're supposed to and blah, 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 me being me, I'm, I'm bored now. I'm not that I'm bored of the project, I'm just bored of doing the same thing over and over. So I thought I'm just going to pick bits and do bits in the areas that I'm in to see how far away I am from actually being finished. So around now should be where you last saw this project and what it will look like at the end. I can't remember for the life of me when I started this. Again, I'll put that down here because it feels like it's been ongoing now for some time, but I thoroughly enjoy working on this. So this is where we've got to. And I think you'll agree that where it's got to is sort of showing me just how close I am to sort of getting to the outer border. Although it's probably miles away because there's quite a lot to do in each of the corners. So this is where I have got to. So as you can see, that is the gates. So on each of the corners or each of the, each of the sides, there's a set of gates, a boulder, and then above this boulder is where the little trees are um, with the lanterns, which is the outside. So that's, 
that's where we're at. Obviously this side still needs to have its beads put in, so there's no beads in here. I've beaded, oh, I don't know if you can see, I've beaded this section in half of the gate. Um, there's still loads to do, as always, on this piece. If I back up, I'm going to have to move right out of the way so you can see it. But this is where we're at. Let me move back a bit further. See, but now I feel like you can't see it at all over there. Let me move it forwards. There we go. So you can see actually how big it is. Um, and what I'm doing is where there was portions where I'd done the stitching and I hadn't done the beading. So for instance, where are we? Um, yeah, so this side here has got all the stitching done, including the specialty stitches. Let me just see if I can show you. Um, there we go. Um, so you can see I've done the specialty stitches in this side. Um, and again here, specialty stitches. And the beadwork has been done on these bits all around the edges. So it's just the beadwork to be finished in this, in this corner. Um, over here on this corner, I've done the cross stitch work. I haven't done the specialty stitches in there yet. And again, the beadwork needs to be done. And then obviously then I can do the next section which will be this bar here. I didn't finish, this This actually follows, this section here follows down here. Um, but I just wanted to do the top so I could get the gate in, or do half the gate. I'll do exactly the same on this side. So I will probably do the outer borders on, on here and then do the gate, then maybe go back and do the specialty stitches, put the beads on, and then work my way round from there rather than just doing, because in actual fact, the way the design or the way the pattern tells you to do it is you would do this section here and then you would do this section here and then you would do the same in the bottom two corners. Then you do this section here and then again on all four corners and then you do this section here with the gate on all four corners or all four sides. I just get bored of doing the same thing over and over again four times, so I've decided to do it like this and do it so that I, I do something different. But as you can see, there's, there's, there's certain parts of it. So that's been beaded, that's been beaded, that's been beaded, that's been beaded. Um, that hasn't been beaded, so when I do this corner, I'll do this beading. So yeah, I've sort of gone a bit all over the place, but I know which bits I've done and which bits I haven't done. But I absolutely love it absolutely love it and it took a lot to put it down I can't wait for it to be finished and it's just so blingy and shiny although you can't I don't know can you see can you see all the bling I don't know what you can see in the video but I don't know how you can do it justice because it's it's just there's just so much in it but love it so yeah so that is where we're at. So if I scroll it up, it might be easier to see it all in its entirety. So two corners at the top, or the main corners are done. I just need to do the outer edges on one corner. And then go down and repeat down here on the bottom corner. So although, I sort of sit there and say there's not much left to do. In terms of man hours, then <laughs> probably, yeah, there's still loads to do. But the fact that I've made such a big dent in it and I actually feel like I'm close to a border, like a final border, rather than just another section, it was like a massive milestone for me. And it was like, yay! So, so yeah. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to try and do the whole top section, including the little trees with the little lanterns, and then sort of follow it down the sides and then do the borders again at the bottom. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to go with it. I think I'm just going to let my, uh, let my desire drive me with this, of deciding, you know, which direction I want to go in next. Because 
I tend to find that if I try and follow it the way it's supposed to be done, where it's like, okay, well, you do these, this one once and then you repeat that four times, it sort of put me off because it was like, I did it once and it was like, oh, okay, I'm done, that's good. And then you do it a second time, it's like, oh, it's getting a bit boring now doing the same thing. And then it's like the thought of doing a third and a fourth, it was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm off on a little Teresa tangent and just going to wing it and go wherever I want to with it. And, and we'll get there eventually, we'll get to the end of it, but I'm gonna do it my way. <laughs> so, so there you go, people. Um, uh, that's all the stitching. So for those that were only here for the stitching, that's it, I'm afraid. Um, I don't think it's that bad, considering that I've barely done any stitching and I've really not spent any time indoors. Um, I think that's, it will do. It will do. <laughs> My plan is, hubby is away this weekend. And the weather, although it's supposed to be, you know, intermittent, sunny and not, we've got high winds today. Um, and, you know, rain clouds. And I don't think it's, it's outdoor weather, so to speak, for today. Although it's, it's still early, so who, who knows? With the way the weather goes here, you really don't know what you're going to get. We're sort of getting a mixed bag right now. Um... I'm just hoping that all my plants don't blow over. So my plan is that it's gonna be a bit of a stitching weekend and I'm gonna spend a bit more time doing stitching. You know, Lauren's off doing her thing for the weekend. Hubby's off doing his thing for the weekend. Fingers crossed nothing else pops up to sort of drag me out or drag me away. I can sit and do my stitching for the weekend and just have a really nice relaxing, do as I please weekend. <laughs> That's the plan. Do love a good plan. So thank you for those that were only here for the stitching. Moving on, um, although, hold on, for those that were here for stitching, I'm not sure for that, who knows, who knows, but probably most of the people that are in the community are aware that um, so-and-so has closed down, which was a bit of a shock, I have to be honest, because it was like, oh, don't get me wrong, I love to give my money to the smaller businesses, um, um, you know, so I'm, I very rarely buy my fabric from so-and-so. My DMC threads and those sorts of things, I don't buy from so-and-so. But some of the charts that I wanted to get my hands on quickly, I used to get from so-and-so. But the biggest problem for me, or the biggest like, oh no, this is a disaster, is the specialty threads. So they did a lot of the specialty threads that I use. So things like um, the Moray, uh, or Moray, Moray Silks, which I use in my Autumn Promise. The, um, uh, Dalje, Avera Schwarz. Those threads are the ones that I get from there. The Krennic and the Treasure Braids, I usually get from so and so. Although I think some, I think, I think uh, Lakeside Needlecrafts are now um, doing a lot of the Krennics. Not sure about the Petite Treasure Braid. So these are all the things. So basically, more of the silk threads. So like the the Dinky Dyes, um, the Vera Schwarz, um For me, it's more the silk threads that I would get from so-and-so, purely because unless I was on a thread cart club, it, it's just, it's, it was always really quite expensive to get any sort of silk threads in from, from elsewhere. And obviously it's the waiting time. So my question to the community, because you know we're all from all over the world. We're global. I love the fact that we're global. So the question I have is, is there anywhere closer to home to the UK, such as Europe, you know, some of the, the closer places that maybe we could order our threads from. So there's the silk threads, I mean, this is it. I've only really used so-and-so and a lot of the US places. I have not used or been made aware of any places in the EU or in Europe or in sort of closer to home where I could actually get my silk threads shipped from. So for those that are 
in the know, because I'm not in the know, <laughs> for those that are in the know that might have the answers to this question, please let me know. Um, I would love to let the rest of the UK know where else we can go to get some of our suppliers. Not to pull anything away from the States, because a lot of the stuff I would still go to 123 Stitch. Um, and I would always give my business to places like Lakeside Needlecrafts. Um, uh, you know, the fabrics, I tend to go with more of the hand-dyed fabrics anyway. So the hand-dyed fabrics and, and things like that, I would normally stay with more the, the smaller business run companies where I can. But obviously the silk threads, because they were what they were, and they were as expensive as they were, um, a lot of the bigger places were the place that you would get them from, such as 123 Stitch or so-and-so, because they'd done the full range of all the different ones that you needed. So now we have lost so-and-so, I wanted to know what alternatives there are that are closer to home than the States and Australia and, Ca and Canada um, for me to order silk threads. Obviously DMC, I'll get that from Lakeside Needlecrafts and various other places in the UK. You know, places like Packed Book Rabbit. Um, we have got a com uh, another one called the London Bead Company here in London um, that do ship in for some of the silk threads, but not necessarily the ones that I like to use. So yeah, so anyone that's in the know that can give me some advice of places closer to home that we could sort of, you know, look at now that we've lost so-and-so, um, would be most gratefully received. So thank you so much if you do send me something and that would very much be appreciated. Right, that's it for the sewing stuff. So thank you so, so much for those that were only here for that. For those that are here for the long haul, let's crack on with something slightly different to normal. So diamond painting. <laughs> For those that um, have been with me for some time now, you would have known that back in December, I think it was November or December, um, on one of my updates, I showed a diamond painting that I did um, as a present for my daughter, Lauren, for Christmas. And back then I did actually say that, don't get me wrong, I can see why lots of people are into the diamond painting. It is a lot faster than stitching, that's for sure. But I didn't necessarily think it was, it was a me thing. Um, I'm still don't think it will be something that I'll be like, oh yes, I must do diamond painting, and you know I must do it every week because I still don't think it's me. You know, I, I'm easily bored by it. I have to be honest because it's it's very repetitive. Not that stitching isn't repetitive, but at least I don't know. I don't find diamond painting overly therapeutic. I just find it that you just sit there. It doesn't require a lot of brain power, admittedly. I do find that it's much more of a autopilot thing that I could sit and do. Um, but it's just, it doesn't fill me with the joy like my stitching does. However, that said, my lovely neighbor has a bit of a thing for the VW camper vans. I'll put a little picture up here of what I mean. And he happened to see my daughter's diamond painting and was just like, oh wow, that's amazing. And he was like, God, he said, did you do that? So I was like, well, yeah. So he went, oh, he said, I don't know how you can do that. He said, just sit in there, put in them all. He went, but it's so effective. He said, and the way it shines and the light and it does this and it does that. So because I couldn't help myself because my neighbors, oh, we get on so well with, with the neighbors. I decided I wanted to do a bit of a gift for him. And I was looking at these, uh, first of all, I was looking to stitch him a VW camper. And Chris, when I put in um, cross stitch VW camper chart, in actual fact, a diamond painting came up, not a stitching thing. And when I saw it, I was like, you know what? I quite like that one because it's got the three different colored campers in, which are like the classics. And I was at, and to stitch it, it would take forever. It would, it would take me forever to stitch it. And I was thinking, well, diamond painting is a lot faster, like super fast. So when I've actually clicked on it, it took me through to a company called victoriasmoon.co.uk. I think it's Victoria, yeah, it's victoriasmoon.co.uk. Um, and their shipping time was really 
quite fast in comparison to some of the others that I'd ordered and they took like a good month or so to get here. So I am bit the bullet and saw, you know, the camper van one, so I was like, I have to have that one. So I plopped that into my, into my, uh, into my cart, ready to purchase. But then, whilst I was scrolling through, I thought, oh, I'll just have a little look to see what they've got because the, the site is really, really good to navigate. I'll put the link here so that you can go and check it out. Um, and then I saw a chart that I just could not turn down. So the reason for that is, as you know, I do love my poochies. I have, I had two poochies. I lost one poochie back about three years ago. Three years ago, or four years ago, my little Chester. Put a little picture here for you. Um, and I wanted something, I wanted like a, a piece that I could stitch that would remind me of him. Not that I'd ever forget him, but you know what I mean. Just like a little, a little something. But I never really found anything, and I never really found anything that actually looked like him, because he was quite unique as a little cavalier king Charles Spaniel. Um, and all the ones that I saw, like the stitched ones, didn't actually look like him. So I'm like, well, yeah, I could stitch that, but it doesn't look like he does. On this diamond painting website, there is an image of a poochie that is almost, it, it just could have been Chester. It looks so much like him, and it's as inquisitive as Chester was. If Chester saw something, he'd have nose in it. He wouldn't go and sniff it. And if it, if, in, if it remotely seemed like it would be edible, he'd eat it. Um, this is the design that I saw that I just could not pass up. It's just too cute. And it is so Chester. I remember when he was a bit younger and he'd go into a garden or he'd see a flower. If it smelt, he had his nose in it. He wanted to smell it. And then if he thought it was edible, he would eat it, literally, because he was like a little nunu. He would eat anything in sight. In fact, we had a number of vet appointments where we had to go and get him sorted out because he'd eaten something that he wasn't supposed to have eaten. Um, so I couldn't pass on this. And I got it in a much bigger size purely because it's more for sort of in memory of him and because it looks so much like him. And they do say that the, um, the diamond paintings are very similar to the cross stitch charts, that if you go with too small a size, once they're done, they look a bit pixelated. They're not, you know, you can't really see the detail. Sometimes the bigger you go, the more detail you see. It's a bit like with our stitching. So if you go with a smaller count, say for instance a 25 count, I find that it looks sharper than if I'd have done it in an 18 count. Um, the diamond painting is very similar in the respect that obviously the drills don't change size, but if you change the size or the ratio of the size of the piece that you're doing, the bigger it is, the more clear the details look when it's, when it's done. So I couldn't resist myself. I decided that I was gonna purchase both pieces I have to say, you know, last time I ordered these diamond paintings, they took, they did take a long time to get here. Like a long, long time to get here. Um, these shipped super fast. Super fast. So, where are they? So, the piece that I ordered for um, my neighbour, I am doing, is a 30 by 40 centimetre piece. And the one that I ordered in memory of my lovely little Chester, was a 40 by 50 centimetre piece. I ordered them on the 24th of July and they turned up beginning of last week. I mean, super fast. They do say shipping within 13 to 18 days and it was right. And when it all turned up, it turned up perfectly. I would love to be able to show you how it was boxed up. Both pieces were in this lovely little box, beautiful little pink flowery type box, all very well packaged, nothing looked sort of cheap and tacky and nasty, which the other one, I've got to say, I wasn't overly impressed. It comes with your standard, your standard stuff, so your tweezers, your sticky stuff to go into your little thing. This 
because I'm not really into the whole diamond painting, I don't know how good these are. I don't know for those that actually do do diamond painting. The little thing that you use to stick the drills on with, if there's one specifically that you think is amazing, much, much better than the little ones that come in the kits, please let me know, because I would like to purchase one and make it a little easier on myself, since as I am now doing a couple of diamond paintings. The tray, it's the same as what you get in any other bog standard one, but perfectly acceptable. I haven't had a problem using any of it. The drills turned up lovely packaged this time. Last time, they were in these little baggies, but they were on like runs. And to open them, you had to have somewhere to be able to store them because once you opened the packet, they'd all just come flinging out. You couldn't sort of close the packet back up. The Victoria's Moon ones. Here's, here's the one for the Chester. The Chester one. It turns up in a, in a silk packet. She says, sorry about the rustling. Rustle, rustle. But each of the baggies comes in the normal baggies with the numbers on. So it's got the number on there that's on the side of the chart. Then it's got the equivalent colour code number. And then it's got how much is in there. And they're in the little baggies so that you don't need to sort of store these elsewhere. You could, you can leave them in their little baggies. Which last time, there was this whole rigmarole of having to undo all of the packets, put them into little pots, label the little pots up so that I could use them going forwards. These I don't need to. These I can work straight out of the little packets because they're just tiny little little baggies. And because the projects are not overly big, I could quite easily just work out of here. I don't need to really go and set anything up. Not like last time where you had to, you had to sort of go through it all first. This is just literally play with the little plastic baggies. Off we go. I liked that. I really liked that. So as far as I'm concerned, this company, in comparison to my last experience, I think that was one of the other things that sort of put me off of it because it was like it turned up and there was just so much that needed to be done before you could start. You know, you had to have them all sort of separated and all the drills all sorted out before you could actually make a start on it. And I'm one of these people that I'm like, well, okay, let's start. <laughs> I want to start like now. Patience is not a virtue I possess, obviously. Um, so yeah, absolutely love the way it was shipped. Got loads of notifications to say, received your order, it's in process. Then when it shipped, and literally they said it shipped and it turned up, I don't know, maybe three days later. Great, great service. It's turned up beautifully packaged. I just wish that I could have shown you because it didn't even dawn on me to, to put it onto this video. I should have done. Beautifully packaged, like I say, None of that having to play around with, you know, undoing the packets and, and sort of putting it all in containers before you go, before you get started. I can work straight out of these little baggies. Everything's superly well labelled, easy to access. What's not to like? What's not to like about that? I haven't started the Chester one, but I have started my neighbour's one. I do hope my neighbours don't know about my YouTube video. Well, they know about my YouTube, but I don't think they'd actually watch it. So, no, they don't. It's not their thing. So, this is where we have got to on the diamond painting. So, there you go. And we've got partial camper van number one. I've put some... Um, washi tape along the edge because of like the uh, the sticky stuff I didn't want furry bits I couldn't put it here because obviously this is where my code is so that I can see what I'm doing but we have made a start and again it is much faster than stitching it is super quick I just tend to find that I can't do too much of it in one go because I find myself getting a little bit bored but that's just me if you're into your diamond painting, then. And the canvas, 
The canvas feels much stronger than the last one. And when it turned up last time, I had like issues with it sort of creased and crinkled. Not with this, it was, it was folded like into a tube and when I unfolded it and literally took off, like pulled the plastic back and then resealed it, it's flattened out perfectly. And there's no creases or bumps in the actual um, sticky, pa sticky part. I love it. So that is the start of something for the neighbour. Not sure I'm going to frame it myself. I framed Lauren's one, but I'm not sure I want to do it again. I think I'll probably take it to a framer and let a framer do it. But yeah, good start. And absolutely love the kit. And I'm, although I'm not into the whole diamond painting thing, I am itching to start the one for um, in memory of my, my lovely dog, Chester. So, so yeah, but I need to do that one first. But like I say... It's never going to overtake my love for stitching. I do tend to find that I find my stitching much more therapeutic. And given that time is always an issue for me, with the fact that I don't have a lot of time, um, I do love to do what I love, and that is predominantly more my stitching. So, But it's nice to have change. It's nice to do something a little different. I just don't think that I'll whiz through them really fast because I have other things that I want to do and get finished. So there we go. So that is a little update on something new and fresh that I'm doing. I will keep you all posted on how that goes and give you a little update. Um, I have to say a huge thank you to everyone that is um, always sending their love and regards and, and, and prayers and thoughts to my mum. My mum really does appreciate it. Um, she's not doing too bad. Um, we had a bit of a rocky, we've had a bit of a rocky patch through June um, and she, she got quite poorly um, and we've had various, but it's all knock on effects to, to the fact that obviously she's got these gallstones um, and each of the problems is obviously the, the lack of sleep. It makes everything so much more difficult for her because if she's not sleeping, she's not really on, a, on the ball, she's not on a game. And the less sleep she gets and the more ill she feels, obviously, the harder everything becomes for her. So, um, I'm pleased to report, hallelujah, pleased to report that we have a, an appointment for a pre-op assessment, um, I think on the 28th of August. So, I would like to think that she will be going in for surgery within one to two weeks of the pre-op. Because I know that when they go in for their pre-op assessment, there's only a certain amount of weeks that they're allowed to wait because they consider that they've done the pre-op to make sure she's healthy. The fact that my mum's on a certain set of tablets, um, so she's on sort of like uh, blood thinning tablets, they will need to be stopped one week before she goes in for the operation um, because of what it is. And then she can restart those. So I know that once once we have the pre-op assessment in at the end of August, it's all looking massively promising um, to have the surgery done, I would say, within a couple of weeks from that. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, she can get back on track, get herself fighting fit again, or as, as fighting fit as she can be, and move on with her life and actually start getting out and about and, you know, in, enjoying, enjoying herself. She's got a her little mobility scooter, um, which she can, she can use to go off out by herself and, you know, at least pop to the shops. Um, and just go driving around if she's bored or wants to go somewhere. She's not reliant on everybody else. Um, but again, she can only really do that when she's when she's on her game. Because otherwise, you know, everything becomes a problem. You know, everything becomes more difficult than it needs to be. So, but massive thank you to everyone for, for all the loving, kind words and, you know, the prayers for my mum. She is doing great considering um so yeah so at the moment fingers crossed at the moment everything seems to be you know going and heading in the right direction the wonderful weather is helping because at least she's getting off out you know she's getting outside she comes out in the garden she does a little bit of gardening with me um yeah then the nicer weather is making it a lot easier for her to get around and to sort of be self-sufficient and 
you know, just get outside, not just sort of sit indoors and just sit there watching TV or whatever. So, so yeah, at the moment we're all good. So thank you so, so much for that. Lastly, we're on the last legs. So for those that wanted to have a little, you know, a little look at the garden in the summer, I'm gonna drop a video in here to show you how it looks, what I've been up to, um, and then maybe, maybe when we get to the end of the season and I pull it all out and I'm gonna start putting my tulip bulbs in, maybe, maybe you'll get a spring one. So it's well. a little windy today, so here we are on the deck. So this is where I'm sitting when I'm chilling in the garden. Got my nice little canna there, I do love a good canna. This is, um, this is the fun wolf with the neighbours, as you can see, it's rather fun. Um, so yeah, so this is the deck area, where we will sit and have something to eat. My lovely hanging baskets, with my begonias and my fuchsias. And of course, the fire pit, sun loungers, most important. And then here is the flower beds. So. We've got, we've got loads, really. Um, so over here, obviously, we've got my canna. We've got the lovely gladiolis. Do love a good gladioli. I hope you can hear it's a bit windy. Um, here's another little canna down here. And of course, my dahlias. Lots of dahlias. A lot of people get this wrong and they call these geraniums they're not actually geraniums because geraniums are the perennial type these are pelagonians but because people only actually know them as geraniums that is why the shops sell them as geraniums but they are actually pelagonians so here's my The Cosmos, well, the Cosmos has actually been really quite a disappointment. So, here's the Cosmos. Um, but there's only one or two of them have actually started flowering, and we're, we're in August already, so um, you would have thought that they would have done their business by now, but they're a bit slow on the uptake. Um, there's my little weeping cherry tree, underplanted with some petunias. To be honest, this I just sort of let romp away I let it do its own thing um, and then at the back there that's my asters and then inside the greenhouse you can see my pepper plants and my tomatoes are in there as well um, the rose tree is just coming ready for its second flush lots of goodies in rockery bed, although there's probably lots of weeds in the rockery bed as Got well. Got some lovely osteosternums, um, some little diddy lilies, and little pom-pom dahlias, they are just beautiful, you know when you just feel some, that's something that you just want to squish, like that's that's what these are like. You just want to either tap them, bop them, or squish them. Here's my lovely delphiniums, which are, <laughs> well, I don't know how they're hanging on. Well, that one's not. Let's see, look, this one's fell over. This is really, really nice. This is a swan lake. Little spikies. Do you like a little bit of structure in the garden? Hence the delphiniums. And then, more dahlias. They're quite big, to be honest, when you sort of see them up close. These ones, not so much, but the ones that I'll show you shortly. The foxglove have gone over. They're already gone. The beanum, some more. And dahlias there. Some bed dahlias. Cosmos, again, still not flowered. Um, the jasmine. Jasmine is romping away. Oh, it's my little owl. <laughs> it's my mate owl that I have in the garden. Um, and then we've got climbing roses. I've just planted a new rambling rose, so hopefully in spring I'll have 
another addition to the uh, pergola. Some more dahlias. So this is it. A lot of what's in the garden is actually sort of going to be sort of a, a wait and see. Obviously the dahlias will all get pulled up and the tulips will go in. Um, but this is my little haven. So when I'm not doing my stitching, which I, I know I've neglected massively in the last couple of months, but this is why, because this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm planning the Clematis. A clematis, depending on who you are and how you say it, because apparently there's no wrong or right way. So, so we've got this little beauty here. Um, and then this is the pathway underneath the pergola. We've got an evergreen an evergreen clematis in there as well, but obviously that's not in flower. That doesn't come in flower until spring. So as you can see, everything's romping. See, this is another beautiful dahlia down here. So it's facing downwards. Why are you down now? Come up here, pal. But just to give you an idea, that's my hand. This is the size of the flower. Big and blousy. Just how I like them. Canners. I've got another canner here, which is just ready to pop, look, just ready. If I could, this jasmine, this is the jasmine. If only I could throw the scent down the camera to you, because this, oh, this is truly kicking, smell-wise. It's just all smell. I've got some um, wild fox glove down there as you can see it's pretty pretty big but he hasn't flowered so he might be a next year thing more dahlias again oh, get out the camera light beautiful colors and then these are the monster dahlias well I say monster dahlias I I disbudded these ones but that's my hand and I can't even get my hand they're that big, they're huge. I do love my dahlias. And then there's this little beauty down here. And they're so just, oh, love my dahlias. And then my little canna. Down here. And then, I don't know, you down this end. We've got some little fuchsias, a little fuchsia tree there for mummy. The aces, which I've strategically pruned. The rose tree. Um, more fuchsias. Bamboo up against the greenhouse, hopefully to shade it. Uh, nice little Daphne here. That's a nice spring one. Do love the flower that comes from that. It's bright pink. And then down here is my. Um, foxgloves that are all ready to go for next year so they'll get planted in around September time uh, this is my other rose rose and my chrysanthemums which as you can see are already starting to flop so I need to stake those quick sharp um, greenhouse is a mess all right but I'm gonna take you in there anyway just so you can see the tomatoes so there's the tomatoes we've got a couple of couple of orange tomatoes. I only need to do tomatoes and peppers. Some more bits and pieces for Mumsy. So yeah, there you go. There's the garden people and then that's my house down there. So as you can say, it's a very little space but that's not to say that I haven't rammed as much in there as humanly possible. I do do try. I can. There's Fudgy hanging out on the rockery, no doubt doing damage, weeing on something, because that's what he does. He finds everything that he could possibly find to wee on. But this is this is August. August flower beds. What's well, not to like? Some more Do sideways. Sideway. Some grasses. Some more agapanthus, which are in flower. Look at that little bumblebee. What are you doing, bumblebee? So the 
Agapanthus, the hostas got absolutely annihilated by the slugs, but then you already know about the slugs because I've already moaned and whinged about them. As you can see, I didn't manage to get rid of them as much as I would have liked. So there you go. There's the garden. We've done the stitching. We've done the new bit of diamond painting. It's now time for me to actually go and put all this lot away, get this video uploaded for you, sit my bottom down and crack on with some stitching. And in between all that, if the weather breaks and we don't, you know, I don't get windswept or the plants don't get, get blown away, I'll pop outside and do a few bits over the weekend. But it's been lovely to hang out with you, lovely to update you with what I've been up to. I appreciate all the lovely comments for those that are going, Teresa, where are you? <laughs> I wonder where you've been. I'm very much here. And where I can, I will upload stuff to my blog. I've been a little bit lapsed with that as well. Um, but it is more of a stitching blog. But I decided, you know what, I'm just going to put some pictures of my, of my plants on there. I didn't have any stitching to show you, so I'll show you plants instead. Um, so for those that are more into the blog type things, head over to my blog. Um, I am going to try and post stuff on there as and when I can. So until next time, and next time should be at the end of this month. If it's not the end of this month, it hopefully will be the beginning of September. So I hope you're well. I hope you're all enjoying the final weather, apart from those in Australia. I hope your winter's not too harsh. Until next time, people. Bye-bye for now.